I mean, your hand, you're showing me around. You've been yes, here for a while. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to Lita. Beautiful, beautiful Lita. Guiding me into town is Leeton's Multicultural Affairs Coordinator, Ken Darchi. So this is Chelsea Square. Originally from uh, Kenya, he now helps new migrants settle in. What makes Leeton special is the people. Uh, the friendliness here is unlike anything I've ever experienced. So what sort of people live here, Ken? All sorts, to be honest. People from everywhere. And for a small town, you'd think that isn't the case. But it is. That must make life pretty interesting, oh, yeah? You can imagine the sorts of friendships you'll develop. You can imagine sorts yeah. of foods you'll get to taste. Yeah. I hope I'm going the right way. Yeah. Is this where I should no, be no, driving? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, right directing no. me, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I should be giving you directions. So you're driving like a local. <laughs> Ken is taking me to a gathering of the local Afghan community. They represent some of the newest refugees to arrive in town. Everyone is here because either they or someone in their family risked everything to come to Australia. What a feast! Come on! Very nice. Very nice. Refugees can apply for permanent residency and the chance for their families to join them. But they face a very long wait. The chicken, we have a uh, kind of dish. This is famous from Afghanistan and my culture. Smells good. Yeah, everyone likes it. Roshan, on the barbecue, arrived in 2013 by boat as a refugee. He's now a citizen, but he's been waiting nine years for his wife and three kids to be allowed to come. Why did you feel the need to leave Afghanistan? Did you feel that you were in danger? Yeah, of course, because this is the one reason is just not me. This is the reason of all Hazara people in Afghanistan. It must have been so traumatic to leave your family behind and come by boat. Uh, the reason is uh, we want to find uh, for all the family want to find a way because that time we cannot believe if, if one of us can arrive somewhere safe or not. That's the first step. We leave them, try to find a way. For Roshan, it was a gamble that did finally pay off. In March of 2022, his wife and children were able to join him changing all of their lives for the better. I find it hard to imagine what it would take to leave your family behind in search of a brighter future. But it's a common story in Leeton, and it's all about opportunity. Most migrants arrive on government-assisted schemes to bring in workers. They fill the thousands of jobs created by a food bowl that's operating at full capacity. Beautiful fruit. So Good to ice trees. Yeah. Well, people lovely. like Paul Matum. Oh, yeah. He came here from Newcastle in New South Wales and spent 45 years working his way up from picker to rice mill manager before becoming mayor. If I came to this farm many years ago when I was a picker and I saw a fruit like this, I'd want to pick for the day and because uh, the, the, the size of the fruit is good. The, uh, Look at that, the so the trees, much of it. The trees are small and they're loaded. So it brings back memories for you, obviously. Oh, it certainly does, you know, it was a big part of my life. I came in 1967, I hopped on the train and I came to Leeton and I started picking fruit and uh, truly it helped uh, us I suppose, uh, settle into Leeton. I got married two years later and we had our family here and I still picked fruit after I got married because it was an opportunity. From the days when you first arrived here and there were a lot of Italians, there's, there's a lot more diversity now, isn't there? Oh, without a doubt. I think there's something like 30 something different uh, nationalities that uh, go to one school, as I understand it. But it really didn't happen until about 2011, 2012. That's where we got the bulk of the Afghani guys and uh, 
uh, coming into our town. And that's when uh, we then sprung into action and we become a Leeton multicultural support group. So that's embracing everyone, not just the refugees, that's embracing everyone. Our aim is to ensure that if we know about it, that we will then help them settle, especially if they've got children. We want to make sure they're not crammed in the houses. We want to make sure that they're treated as they should be treated as any other human being. We can't fix the world, but we can fix up what we can fix up.